This time I'll call the February meeting of the Haywood County Schools Board of Education to order. This time I'd like to ask Mr. Jimmy Rogers if he would lead the board in our prayer tonight and immediately following that we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Let us pray. For this gracious Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for the many blessings you bestowed upon us. Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for Haywood County. Thank you for this community. Thank you for our schools. We appreciate all of our great teachers, leaders, staff, workers throughout our school district. We want to thank you especially, Lord, for our beautiful children of this county, and the parents, and the great success they can have and they are having by learning to be the best that they can be. And Lord, I pray your guidance upon this board as always as we make decisions that help to betterment our schools and better our educational opportunities throughout this county, this state, this nation. Give us the guidance and the wisdom to make the best decisions that affect our lives of our children our families, our communities, and Lord, help us in everything that we do. Keep us safe, keep us secure, and Lord, be with those who are suffering. We know we've had a great tragedy. Lord, we pray your guidance and your prayers and your lifting arms, loving arms upon those families. Lord, we thank you again for all that you've given us. Lord, guide and direct us. And Lord, we'll always give you the praise and the glory for it all. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Mr. Henson was not able to be here this evening. He's got a church uh, function that he uh, needed to attend tonight, so Mr. Henson will not be here. But, uh, our next regular board meeting will be held here at the Education Center on March 13th at 7 o'clock. Our next regular work session will be Thursday, March the 9th, here at the Education Center at 6 o'clock. Haywood County Schools uh, Foundation uh, Mardi Gras I think the tickets are all sold out, but I understand you can still make a donation to your favorite candidate. We have six great candidates, three for Queen and three for Kings, my understanding. So if you haven't had a chance to donate to those folks, I would say reach out to them. All right, any other announcements from anyone? All right. Under agenda adjustments, I've been informed that we need to ask Mr. Burnett a question about that. Well, we've got six motions from building and grounds to bring forth tonight. All right, we'll do it right, right before the finance. How would that be? Be good. Right before finance. Whatever motion y'all makes, and the finance committee can figure out how to pay for it. Right. <laughs> that works. Just kidding. That'd be great. So we'll add the building and grounds. Is there any other? Well, we'll have one in with finance, one adjustment. Okay, one adjustment. All right, we'll just add it underneath the regular financial stuff, okay? Is there any um, objection to adding those? Okay, at this time, I'll entertain a motion. That motion to approve the agenda. Okay, as amended. Well, Mr. Nesbitt's made the motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Mr. Francis, any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next, we have some great stuff to do tonight. Mr. Haynes. Chairman Francis, members of the board, uh, this evening for our athletic recognitions, uh, we have our middle schools with us. Um, it's it's really a, a lot of wrestlers. Uh, we had some good uh, wrestling athletes this year, and they, they won some medals, so I'll introduce them to you. Uh, first, we'll have Josh Simmons, athletic director at Canton Middle, come up. 
members of the board, uh, I'd like to, from on behalf of Camp Middle School, I'd like to introduce our coach, uh, Mr. Brian Pace. And he has a couple of outstanding wrestlers he would like to talk about tonight. Thank you for having us. Uh, first, I'll bring up Isaac Young, sixth grader, 113 pounds, uh, undefeated season, 21 and 0, conference champion and state champion. <laughs> Next, I'd like to bring up Carson Riley, uh, first year wrestler, eighth grade, 195. With a season record of 16 and 7, uh, conference runner up and state runner up. <laughs> and then we had a few that couldn't make it, uh, so I'll just mention them Camden Yawn, eighth grader, 138, 23 and 0, conference champion, state champion. Uh, Aka Ramirez, 152, with a 20 and 7 record, third in the conference, fourth in the state. Antoine Allison, eighth grade, 147 with a 12 and 7 record, uh, fourth in the conference. Brantley Henderson, sixth grade, 68 pounds, fourth in the state with a 4 and 2 record. And Avery Henderson, eighth grade, with a 9 and 9 record and finished fifth in the state this year. Wow. And that's. Good job, guys. Uh, next, we have uh, Miss Julie Green, the athletic director from Bethel Middle. Members of the board, thank you for having us here tonight. It's always just such a special celebration to get to bring our kids in and recognize their accomplishments um, during this wrestling season. Uh, we've got a couple of our fantastic wrestlers here with us tonight. So um, I'll just get right down to it. First, we've got Mr. Mason Young, uh, who had an undefeated season. He is part of our team of Western Division champions. Uh, could not be more proud of him. He went on to compete at the state meet where he actually sustained an injury, so he didn't get to finish the way that he had hoped, but we are so proud of everything that he's accomplished throughout this season. Uh, we also have Mr. Bryson Chapel with us this evening, who also had an undefeated season. He is a conference champion, and he's also a state champion. Uh, so we are incredibly proud of both of these young men. We had one other conference champion who couldn't be here with us this evening. That's Mr. Caleb Glantz. So thank you guys for representing our school so well. And this would not have been possible without their coaches. So I'd also like to recognize Mr. John Mahaffey and Mr. Ron Hunley. And, and lastly, we did have one from Waynesville Middle. He could not be here, but I wanted to, to recognize him as well. Uh, that is Everett Messer. He was the uh, champion at the 220-pound weight class. That's all we got. Good evening, members of the board. It is my pleasure to introduce to you tonight the principal at Canton Middle School, Mr. Casey Crook, to uh, have a special recognition for one of our students there. Hello. Thank you for having us again. I want to uh, introduce a, a special young lady, uh, two special 
young ladies here in just a minute. Sorry, didn't mean to cut anybody. We are introducing Miss Lydia Frazier. She's a seventh grader at Canton Middle School, and she has been provided a wonderful opportunity for a scholarship through the CFNC, the College Foundation in North Carolina, for the Bell Scholarship. And I won't describe it to you. I'm going to introduce somebody that will. But we want to tell you how proud we are of Lydia. What a great, wonderful opportunity this is. And I heard two answers that were great from Lydia as a seventh grader. Where you want to go to college? I don't know yet. What do you want to do? I don't know yet. So that's, <laughs> that's exactly where you should be in life. That's good. So uh, I want to introduce Miss Devin McCarthy James. She's going to come up and tell you a little bit about the scholarship and what a wonderful opportunity this is and how meaningful it is for Lydia to get this. Thank you all for having me tonight. As he said, I am the regional representative for um, the College Foundation of North Carolina. Um, if you're not familiar, CFNC, we provide free resources um, to help students plan for college, plan for careers, apply to college, and of course pay for college, which a lot of families stress about. So I'm really excited to be here today um, on behalf of the College Foundation and this um, wonderful scholarship. Uh, the foundation established the Victor Bell Scholarship to encourage students with potential to aspire to a college education and to support them and that in that goal as early as possible. Mr. Bell served as chairman of the College Foundation um, of the Board of Trustees for 30 years. This scholarship honors his vision and selfless service by supporting new generations of North Carolina students to reach their potential. This year, only 15 seventh grade students across the state were awarded the Bell Scholarship. With this award, they receive $2,000 in recognition of academic achievement and potential for future success in college. In addition to the initial contribution made to a North Carolina 529 plan in the student's name, Bell Scholars are also given the opportunity to continue earning $2,000 a year each year as long as they continue to meet all academic criteria. In fact, they're eligible for this program until their fourth year of college for a total award your, yeah, your math, <laughs> your mathing. $20,000 to assist um, the student in attending the North Carolina college or university of their choice. I am so proud and excited that we have a 2022-23 Bell Scholar in Haywood County at Canton Middle, and I look forward to cheering her on for many years to come. Please join me in congratulating Lydia Frazier on her Bell Scholarship Award. Congratulations um, to our, all of our students and our athletes today. We truly have a great system, and I'm so glad when we get to recognize our students and see all the successes we have um, because they are definitely out there. Um, tonight we have teacher recognitions, and so these are very important. Um, the state pays teacher bonuses for teachers that they recognize um, four different criteria, and I'll explain that to you in a minute. But I think it's also real important to stop and remember that um, we have many, many great teachers in Haywood County. And um, sometimes this bonus feels weird to me because I would like to give it to all of our teachers. And I know y'all feel the same way too, but the state does um, designate who gets those bonuses based on criteria. And so we'll go into that. But I just want all the teachers out there listening to know we appreciate you if we had the money. And I don't think we do. But if we did, y'all would pay them, right? Yes. Okay, okay. So um, I'm going to start off, and I'm going to recognize the elementary teachers first and just tell you a little bit about their bonus. Um, for our third grade teachers, they, get, they can qualify for a reading bonus only, and our fourth and fifth grade teachers can qualify for a reading and a math bonus. And we don't come up with those names. The state sends us 
that list of names and they can qualify um, and they can get money if they're in the top 25% in our LEA and or if they're the top 25% in the state. So um, just congratulations to these people and I'll call the elementary people first and recognize them and tell you what school they're from. First of all, um, I hope y'all are in order, I don't know. Ma what are y'all doing? Oh, you're good, okay. Okay, Mandy Allen, she is at Bethel Elementary School. Congratulations, Mandy. And Lynn Garrett is also at Bethel Elementary, and Lynn has retired, but I wonder if she's here. Yeah. Lynn! <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Okay, Maria Miller, Bethel yeah. Elementary. <laughs> Glenna Rayburn, Bethel Elementary. Holly Troll, Bethel Elementary. <laughs> so great job. Clyde Elementary, we have Haley Donaldson. <laughs> Clyde Elementary, Jennifer Marshall. Ann Saudi, Clyde Elementary. And Amanda Stamey at Clyde Elementary. All right, Hazelwood Elementary, Katherine Smith. Amanda Williamson or Mandy Williamson at Hazelwood Elementary. Ashley Caldwell at Jonathan Valley Elementary. <laughs> Haley Caldwell at Jonathan Valley Elementary. <laughs> Karen Langley at Jonathan Valley Elementary. <laughs> and Rachel Rizzotti, Jonathan Valley Elementary. Junaluska Elementary, Taylor Boyd Willoughby. <laughs> Darcy Fox, Junaluska Elementary. <laughs> Angie Hamill, Junaluska Elementary. Amy Kilgore, Junaluska Elementary. <laughs> Brooke Nickel, Junaluska Elementary. Okay. <laughs> Shauna Taylor at Junaluska Elementary. No, she couldn't be here tonight. She had reached out. Okay, moving to Meadowbrook, Brenda Devlin. at a basketball game, I bet. Angela Duckett, North Canton Elementary. <laughs> Nikki King, North Canton Elementary. <laughs> Kennedy Eckerd at Riverbend Elementary. <laughs> Carling Finger, Riverbend Elementary. John Riley, Riverbend Elementary. And that's it for our elementary folks. Let's give them a big round of applause. I appreciate y'all standing up. They, um, it's a great bunch. Come on over. Anybody like to make a comment? <laughs> How do you guys? We won't have to worry about
worry about them. See you later. Yeah. 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 It's not a big joke, it's a lot of people's jokes. <laughs> Congratulations again. I was going to say how many of these people I hired, like I'm feeling old or worked with. <laughs> Congratulations. Now, middle school also, and the state does another little weird twist in middle school, they only per, um, pay bonuses for math in middle school. Go figure. Um, so we have several of our math teachers here that were also um, received this bonus. And first, we'll start with um, Bethel Middle, Matt Golden. <laughs> At Canton Middle School, Sally Hunley. Sarah Hunley. Sarah. <laughs> At Canton Middle School, Angela May. At Camp Middle School, Ariel Sorrells. Heather, Heather Wilson at Canton Middle School. At Waynesville Middle School, Lisa Lawrence. And Tammy Little at Waynesville Middle School. And that is it for our elementary and middle school um, bonus recognitions. And Carol Fox and Elisa Glantz have some AP recognitions too and some CT. But let's get their picture right now for our math teachers. Congratulations. recognitions tonight we had 10 teachers in our county that earned uh, the bonus uh, to get the bonus their students have to score a three or higher on the AP test and so I would like to call out all the names and we have two of them with us tonight so Shannon Hansen Tabitha Judy Stephanie Morgan Sean Sampson Harold Shepard Tiffany Turner Randy Presley Robbie Robles Michelle Ware, and Erica Smiley. For their, um, the CTE teachers, their career technical education teachers, they earn um, bonus pay based on credentials that their students earn. Um, there's three tiers to credentials. A tier one is kind of like a CPR, first aid. And they don't get paid on those levels. But a second tier a credential is like CNA, um, AutoCAD, Revit, um, NCCR, or Excel. And then a third, and they get $25 per um, student that passes. And then a third tier is like Comp TIA, and um, it goes up to $50 per student that earns their credential. So um, we have Lisa Bergen. <laughs> Amy Gardner. 
from Tuscola. Piesga. Ian, um, not here, is Brandy Matthews from Pisca. Um, Ethan Reinhardt, um, he's not able and he sent word that he appreciated it, but he has sick kids and was trying to feed cows. <laughs> for, so he wasn't fr afraid he couldn't make it. And then Patty Singleton at Pisca, and then Eric Solly at Tuscola. Chairman Francis, members of the board, I'm very proud to recognize one of our own for being named, and she just left the podium. Elisa Glantz is our Regional CTE Educator of the Year for um, North Carolina. <laughs> Western North Carolina Regional. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay, though, because she's in the running for the state. Um, CTE Teacher of the Year. And I just want to read you a couple of things about her. She's very humble. Do you know she didn't tell us that she got the regional CTE Teacher of the Year? I had to find out from someone else, and she got it in July. So she hadn't told anybody, and so we found out. She wasn't able to be here for a couple of months at the board meeting. She had other meetings, but so we wanted to get her in and recognize her. But she began her career as a biotech teacher at Waynesville Middle School, and she later transitioned to an ag teacher position at Tuscola High School. We actually worked there together for a while. Um, she has served at Haywood County's career. She's been our CT director since 2005. She has consistently been involved in state and regional activities regarding CTE. She's also vice president of the Western Region North Carolina CTE Teachers Directors Association. She's currently serving in that role. She is um, within our community. She <coughs> has, um, serves on our Fairgrounds Board, the Extension Advisory Board, North Carolina Commerce Board, and the Haywood Economic Work Workforce Development Partnership. If y'all didn't know, um, her family owns Glantz Farms, a beef cattle farm, and she also owns a successful greenhouse, Crabtree Blossoms, and where she lives is the most beautiful place in Haywood County. It's gorgeous, it's gorgeous um, on Fines Creek where she lives. I, I don't know exactly where it is down there, but it is the most beautiful place in the world when you um, sit on her front porch. But I just want um, you to know, Elisa, that I, Dr. Putnam and I both taught CT classes in the high school. And those programs are so special and meaningful to our kids. Um, they're great programs for, I wish all of our students could take those. They learn so many life skills. And so I'm proud of her and everything she's done. And we wish you luck in the state competition. Now she's going to give a speech. <laughs> like to say, um, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, that I really appreciate the support over the last 18 years when I'm working with CTE. Y'all know that CTE is my passion, my love. It's always, ha always has been. Um, since I, I, And I was a product of Haywood County Schools. And so I'm really glad that I was able to come back and serve for y'all. And I go up to competition next week. I'll know next Tuesday. Lisa. All right. Okay, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Putnam, Ms. Barker, Mr. Haynes. Um, I was asked to mention that CTE was awarded a CTE modernization grant 
for grade six through eighth. Um, I had applied for $50,000 in hopes that I get just a little, I ended up getting 34,000 of that money. Um, we will be using it for, I have to read it for what we're gonna use it for. Um, virtual job shadow, which is now Pathful at the middle schools, which is uh, this internet based uh, company that deals with career exploration, especially careers in this area that kids can search for. Um, it also be used for ICEV at the middle schools, and ICEV is a um, online textbook service. Um, but, but they will focus more on career exploration on that one too. Then we're gonna be purchasing a plant and soil science pathway from Reality Works. Um, Reality Works is a really neat company. Um, normally we can't afford to even purchase anything from Reality Works, but this, with this grant, we are able to, we're gonna be doing that for Waynesville Middle. Um, we're gonna be doing a Glowforge Pro 3D printer for Canton Middle. And then for um, Bethel Middle, he requested um, some items to help his shop, such as um, two more lace, a Grizzly downdraft table, um, shaper, and then um, quite a few hand tools he wants to replace. So um, hopefully I can get all of that spent, um, use all that money, and maybe have a little extra to spend on some more. So that's what I'm hoping for. Very good. But um, so uh, that's what that grant's about. It's for, it's strictly for the sixth through eighth grade. Right. And they don't normally fund that area. We're, we're happy that we've got that. Congratulations on the uh, grant award and also for your award and good luck next Tuesday, was it? Yeah. I told Elisa earlier, or Ms. Glant, excuse me, uh, that she could have eight minutes of time up to 10 minutes if she wanted to do a longer speech, but I think she deferred on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Elisa. Thank you. <laughs> We have had a couple of folks sign up to address the board this evening, and now is the time period designated by the Board of Education for public comments. This time is set aside for comments from the general public in regard to matters of concern to the public. However, we request that you do not address specific students and or personnel. Comments are limited to three minutes. The board requests that all speakers adhere to the time limitation and request against mentioning individual students and personnel. First we have, uh, if I mess up your name, I'm sorry, Daphne Alt. Is that correct? Yes. Ms. Alt. Good evening. It's good evening. Good evening. It's quiet in here. <laughs> uh, my name is Daphne Alt and I live in Haywood County. I have three students. Um, the 17 year old, 15 year old, and 12 year old. Um, my son is currently at Pisgah High School and my two younger children are currently homeschooled. Um, I'm speaking tonight, you, you guessed it, to urge you to vote yes to the homeschooler, allowing homeschoolers to participate in um, sports in Haywood County Schools um, as set forth by the North Carolina High School Athletic Association currently and by only requiring the half day rather than the full day that this county currently requires. Um, I typed this all out because I'm super nervous, so I'm just gonna read it. <laughs> During COVID, COVID, I know Haywood County Schools lost 544 students to either private, charter, or home schools, adding the possibility for some of these students to only attend for a half day would possibly draw some of them back into your numbers, um, gaining back educational funding, um, I looked it up and currently North Carolina funds um, roughly $12,000 per pupil. So even if you added just four homeschooled students half a day to your system, think about the money that you could gain back. You could hire one full-time teacher if you just added four homeschoolers. Um, second reason, this is a great idea. More students would also produce stronger athletic teams from a comp competition standpoint. I know several students who've moved out of Haywood County as homeschoolers 
to go to neighboring counties like Jackson, Buncombe, or Swain in order to attend the half day and play sports, take advantage of the sport programs there. So Haywood County with this restri restrictive full day policy is really losing students to just our neighbors right here. Um, number three, other states such as Tennessee and Georgia, we all know enforce the Tim Tebow law, which allows homeschool students to, pr to participate in sports and extracurricular extracurriculars without attending public school at all. Um, so just over the border in Tennessee, um, which is our neighboring county uh, state, um, students can participate in anything afforded to a public school student with no, um, nothing to tie them to anything. So you can contrast that, that policy with the policy that is currently here. It's drastically different. Um, they require nothing while Hayward Re County requires a full day. Allowing homeschoolers to participate in sports promotes community unity and involvement. We are all raising children in this community rather than being an us versus them mentality, which I, which I know most of you don't have. Participating in sports together is attending to the whole child in what is best for all children of the community. Homeschooled students um, and public school students, they're all friends. They all hang out together. Um, and at the rec league, rec level, they play sports together. But then once they hit middle school, oh, no. Finish your sentence. Go ahead. Okay, let me skip. Let me skip on down. Um, when they get into middle school and high school, they have to separate, and they're excluded. They no longer are allowed to participate together. Let me add one more thing. I'm so sorry. Um, after reading your comment, comments in the Mountaineer, I see that the main issue that is plaguing the board is that you think homeschooled student policy is tied to the early college students. And I want to urge you to consider, to consider these two as separate um, issues. Um, the early college is its own school. It has the ability to set up its own sports program if they so desire. Homeschool students, you may attract four, five, six, ten maximum. Those aren't going to affect your numbers at Tuscola or Pisgah in moving up into another classification bracket. Um, so thank you for taking on this responsibility to lead in education, and I will Thank you for considering the well-being of all students, all 1,191 homeschool students in Haywood County. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Alton. If you'd like to leave your comments or present them to the board, we could read it at our leisure. And if you want to do that or if you could email it or whatever, that'd be fine. Thank you very much for your comments. Next, we have uh, Mr. Todd Cawthorn. Is, did I say that right? Cawthorn? Mr. Cawthorn. Yeah. All right. Cawthorn, gotcha. Uh, I come to you today, Mr. Chairman, board, administrators, educators. Uh, and on behalf of my two granddaughters that are age four and nine, and they are in Haywood County Schools. One's a pre-K at HCC and the other's at Unalaska in third grade. And I, I want to address education, uh, to define the act of teaching knowledge to others. Uh, you would think one would have have to have common sense in order to educate knowledge to others. Common sense being the ability to think, behave in a responsible way to make good decisions. Thus common sense. Education, in my opinion, would be to learn to read, write, arithmetic. A uh, boy is a boy, a girl is a girl, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States is a sign of respect and patriotism. Now, to not teach knowledge would be nonsense. The nonsense being defined as foolish and unacceptable behavior. Educa nonsense education, in a sense, could be a child identifying as a cat. Uh, a cat obviously can't read, write, learn math, drive a car, change money. Therefore, letting a child in public schools identify as a cat and use a litter box and meow uh, would in, sense be, in a sense be foolish and unacceptable behavior. That brings me to my next point, a critical race theory that we've all, I hope, have heard about. My pre-K four-year-old granddaughter recently brought home a book sent home by the teachers, and the book was to be read by her mother to her that night. And the name of the book was called Not Quite Snow White biracial young girl is upset because she will never be Snow White. 
he's not quite Snow White. Don't take my word for it. Look it up. It's out there. That is critical race theory to a four-year-old in pre-K. Uh, now, on a nine-year-old, generalized scale elementary, she brought to my attention that she was able to access online in the classroom, third grade classroom, at Junaluska, a book called Pride Puppy. And it's obviously an LGBTQ themed book about a lost puppy that's found by a LGBTQ uh, parade. Don't take my word for it, it's out there. This is to a nine year old in third grade. It's able to access this in Haywood County School. So my point is, the, the educational decisions that educators, administrators, and U.S. board members make uh, will ultimately, and, and parents, will ultimately decide how these children will grow up and live in our society. Uh, I simply ask, as a concerned grandparent, that we educate our children in Haywood County in knowledge, truth, read, write, arithmetic, a boy is a boy, a girl is a girl, love your country, not in foolishness, as uh, acceptable behavior. Foolishness is not acceptable behavior. Such as CRT to a pre-K four-year-old, LGBTQ to a third grade nine-year-old, or as identifying as an animal. Uh, with that being said, Mr. Chairman, Board, Educator, Administrators, I yield back. Thank you very much for your comments, Mr. Cawthorn. All right. Next on our agenda is our approval of our minutes. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Mr. Francis made a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, Mr. Clark, any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right. Next, we have Ms. Cook. <clears throat> Francis, members of the board, I have the uh, summer um, school program plan um, proposal for you for your approval. Um, this is uh, for students who pass a course or subject but are not proficient on the associated EOG or EOC. Um, it offers them a second uh, chance at an administration and it occurs after the completion of the school year and is voluntary. Let's see, this time I need a motion for approval. I'll make a motion. Mr. Second. Clark's made the motion to say with Ms. Morris. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Cook. Mr. Haynes, have you got some policies for us? I do believe you do. Chairman Francis, members of the board, um, as far as policies go this evening, we have four up for first read. Um, <clears throat> most of those, uh, like normal, are those legalese and the required changes from the uh, State School Board Association. There is one I just wanted to point out only because um, you all had asked uh, about this one before when it had come up. Um, it's 4110, the immunization and health requirements for school admission. Um, it clarifies that the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine um, is only required for initial entry, so it'd be like a pre-K kid before the age of five. Um, and that's for pneumonia and meningitis. Uh, it, nothing to do with COVID. It's not a COVID shot. <laughs> you, all, you all had asked that one other time, so I just wanted to make sure. Uh, we pointed that out. Um, but those are the ones that we have for first read there. That's the questions we get, Mr. Haynes. <laughs> I understand. So those four will be tabled for public input uh, until the next regular board meeting. And they'll be online so you can make comments. Perfect. Very good. Um, and then uh, for second read, there's just five. And again, that's uh, those are the ones from the last meeting. And um, if you are all okay with that, I'd ask that you uh, approve those. 
Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the second reading policies as presented. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Rogers. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Clark. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. I think you're still up. Yes, sir. Um, so the last thing I've got to discuss this evening is the Central Haywood High School FEMA and kind of where we're at with that. Um, so on 126, January 26th, uh, we received an email from FEMA um, and it stated that there had been a rule change and we discussed this in, in open session, the board work session, um, but just wanted to kind of go through it again. Um, they stated there was a rule change back in August of 2022. Uh, we were aware of this rule change. Um, we had asked FEMA um, in email about the rule change. Uh, we were told even after that rule change, um, both in September and in November, in email correspondence that we still had a fixed cost offer, uh, that we could use that money however we wanted to. Um, turns out, as of January, um, that's not the case, at least you know according to what FEMA has told us. And instead of a fixed cost offer, we now have a net cost offer. Um, the difference being with that is that that 504,000, and just kind of rounding it, um, has to be used for the scope of work that was done at the current Central Haywood High School building next door. Um, so we are not allowed to use that in a different way if we wanted to. Um, some some options there would be to just do that and complete that scope of work. Only problem is that you know it's probably a matter of time before that building floods again because it's happened <coughs> once. Um, the second option would be to request an alternate project, which we could do, um, and the money would be the same minus mitigation because we wouldn't need to mitigate a different facility as was part of the scope of work um, at the Central Haywood High School building. Only problem with that is that the <coughs> mitigation money that was uh, part of that $504,000 was $499,000, which leaves us with about $5,000. Um, so uh, what I would like to ask um, you all to do if you're okay with it, um, is to kind of go down a third road and see um, about appealing to FEMA um, because we do have in writing after that date change that it is still a fixed offer and that they discussed with leadership and we can still use it in whatever way we want to, um, but yet even though we've got that in writing and we've mentioned that, they say that that's not the case. Uh, but like I said, since it is, um, since we do have it in writing and there is an appeal process, I would I would ask that, that you all go down that road with us and we'll see if we can get a little more money. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm, I'm totally in agreement with Mr. Haynes and uh, I never did like the process sometimes that FEMA throws little curves at you. And uh, this time I would like to entertain a motion or make a motion that we uh, go through the appeal process and uh, see what else we can come up with and get them to all right, we have a motion for Mr. Rogers, second Mr. Clark. Any questions or discussion? The Mr. Chairman, I, I, I agree. I think this matter ought to be appealed. Uh, Mr. Haynes and I have already swapped some information. Uh, we have a 60-day time limit to appeal, and I think we ought to do that I did. under these circumstances. I was going to say, in that 60-day time limit, we actually had a meeting with FEMA again today, and I asked them for clarification. I said, well, is it, is it January 26th? Is that when that 60-day time limit started, just so we know? Because um, it's supposed to be from the letter of determination, and I just figured that that email we got was the letter of determination. And after the person that I was discussing with uh, had to go look up the rule, and wasn't sure of it. Um, he got back and said that wasn't it, but he would let me know. And I actually got an email right before we started that said that they would be sending us a letter of okay. determination. <laughs> so our 60 day time clock has not started yet. Yeah. Mr. Haynes, could you go over the estimated cost to repair the existing Central Haywood High School? Yeah, um, it was just, uh, and, and, and I don't have all the exact details it yeah, just run before. I came in, but it was replacing a like for like exactly. of what is currently there, um, and that was estimated at five hundred and four thousand, including the mitigation, and that was bringing stuff up, you know, changing the flooring to a trazo floor from the wood floor, so that if water got on it, it would 
you know, be able to be cleaned instead of having to be, you know, taken out and replaced, things such as that. But it's all within that scope of work. But again, the mitigation parts of it was 499,000 of the 504. Total damage and repair put out, for, and we had a contractor bid on that to give us a quote was right at a million dollars. The 500,000, as he's correctly indicated, is for mitigative measures. Uh, pouring the crawl space full of concrete, replacement of terrazzo floors, flood tiding, doors and windows, and they anticipate that cost to be at a half million dollars. But total damages um, to include mitigation, 1.5. Yeah. And the reason they don't give all that is because they take into consideration what insurance is supposed to pay on it, and then they give you what's left, which for us is essentially mitigation. I just find it strange that we are trying to move something away from a floodplain because mm -hmm. it's going to flood again. Yeah. And to me, I just think it'd be money spent better somewhere else. So I, I agree. Let's go down the path of due process and hopefully they'll hear our appeal. And with the evidence that we have that we were told all along the former story, I think we have good grounds to do this. But thank you for bringing that up. And we still have to vote on this. Any other questions, comments? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Haynes. Next, we have our building and grounds. I believe we was going to add it before the finance committee. We have several motions to consider tonight. Building and grounds would like to make a motion to enter into a written contract for a due diligence period for a parcel of land. We have a motion from Building and Grounds, Mr. Burnett. Do I hear a second? Second. So, Mr. Nesbitt, any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. A second motion from Building and Grounds is a motion to allow Tuscola High School to install a warm up concrete pad at the track funded by Tuscola High School. We have a motion from Mr. Burnett. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. I think Mr. Rogers beat you just a little bit. <laughs> Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Building Grounds has a motion to install an entry gate at Tuscola High School. At a cost at a cost of seventy nine hundred dollars using Tuscola High School parking funds. Okay, we have a motion, from Mr. Burnett. I hear a second. Second. Second, second Ms. Morris. <laughs> you won that. <laughs> Sorry. Well, <laughs> Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries unanimously. The next is a motion to enter into a contract with Loman Garrett for replacement of the HVA system at the Exceptional Children's Internment Building using ESSER funds. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Burnett. Do I hear a second? Second. second. <laughs> we have a Mr. Francis. Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And we have a motion to install a walk-in cooler and freezer at Tuscola High School, funded by School Food Service. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Burnett. Do I hear a second? Second. So, Mr. Nesbitt, any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, our last motion is to approve the civil design concept designed for Bethel Middle School football field, turf, funded by the Athletic Facilities Grant. So, second. We have a motion from Mr. Burnett, Senator Mr. Rogers. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? So this is just the design process. We don't have a time frame on when we might be breaking ground or anything. Yeah. March. 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 Correct. I was going to say it is March. Um, so this was the design. Uh, Building Grounds looked at it and they liked it. So we'll we'll send that to them and let them uh, begin working. But it is supposed to be March when they start, and it's supposed to be ready before uh, football season next year. That's exciting. Yep. That is absolutely.
Any other questions or comments? That's good. For being them, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. I'm glad we got that grant. Yeah. That's all we have, Mr. Chairman. All right. From building the grounds. Now we go to the Finance Committee. Mr. Clark. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, the Finance Committee reviewed the monthly financial reports and everything looks good. I made a motion to approve, please. Right, Mr. Clark's made a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Still Ms. Morris. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, also, uh, I need a motion to approve the audit contract with Anderson Smith and Wyke for uh, year ending 6 23 And it's the same company that's been doing our audits, and the price is the same. They didn't change the price on us. That's yeah. a good motion to make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something that stayed the same for the last few years. Mm -hmm. About four have, years, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Anyway, we have a motion from uh, Mr. Clark to approve the contract for the audit. I hear a second. I'll second. Second, Mr. Francis. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right. Ms. Garner. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. You have before you tonight for your approval budget amendment number five. This is mainly just to adjust the budget for additional state and federal funds we received. There's also a budget amendment to the capital fund to adjust the budget for some um, flood-related projects. Okay. I'll entertain a motion at this time. We approve it. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Rogers made the motion to approve budget amendment number five, seconded by Mr. Clark. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you, Ms. Garner. Next we have Dr. Putt. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, just as a reminder, we covered a teacher research project just to give you a quick snapshot or recall. Uh, I'm requesting your approval for a research project for one of our own uh, teachers who is seeking her doctorate. Uh, the research project would entail a, um, actually an intervention for students who might struggle in math. Uh, obviously, any participation in this would be um, have to be consented to by the parent. Uh, it basically involves a questionnaire, a questionnaire that has smiley faces and frowny faces, and the kids are able to indicate how well the intervention is working for them. It's basically math journaling, and um, it'll take two to three minutes per day um, for students complete that so it will not detract from their normal instruction also an IRB exemption is in place uh, basically indicating that there's no harm anticipated uh, to students in conducting this research okay I need a motion for approval so moved Mr. Chairman Mr. Rogers made the motion I uh, hear second second okay, well, Mr. Clark any question or discussion on the motion on the floor there being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, board. You're still up. <laughs> All right. And for uh, your, your approval, we have, uh, first, for information, we have 12 separations from employment, four uh, ESS long-term substitutes, and 10 leave of absences. For approval, we have uh, 15 employments, 50 employee status changes, one contracted service, uh, seven employee coaches, 10 non-employee coaches, and four volunteer services. Okay, I need a motion for approval. So moved. Mr. Burnett's made a motion to approve the personnel as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. Ms. Morris, any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Dr. Putnam. There being no further business come before the board, meeting adjourned.